Oh boy. It's the middle hole. And that one. It's weird just talking it, talking it nothing. And take one. Liar. I'm going to tie a musky fly. This is a four aught. A-Rex PR 320 Predator Stinger. Trying out some different lighting. And I kind of had this scrappy little piece of bucktail and So we're just going to start with that. Um, about uh, between 40 and 45. Upper 40s if you want to go a little heavy. Individual strands of bucktail and all my little piles here are pre-counted. That isn't true. I said on the last video, you know, my aim was to I'm keeping this on top but if I if I want to squish around my aim was to tie a little more in the back a little more sparse up front I think I kind of I ended up losing the wide angle so we'll call that a throwaway anyhow Get my wheel, my flash wheel. What are we doing here? We got Krennic Gold. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to do, I don't know why it's hard, I start, start talking so stupid. We're going to do, uh, Magnum, Silver. And this is, this stuff is actually wide enough to be tying almost in two hanks. The, whatever is inside of me that wants to say, or three fills, I'm embarrassed about that. But two hanks, you know, four fills. But yeah, it'll it'll lay like against the hook shank or against your chunk of bucktail. Kinda a little differently than the regular so that, yeah, that's that's Magnum Flashaboo. Now the rest of this bucktail from the base chunk that I had, I'm not gonna use. It's a little shorter. It's also a little softer. So something to think about when you're tying in bucktail is that the more dense you tie this, the less water can move through it. And When you're not getting water <clears throat> to hit the strands of bucktail, they're not moving. And when they're not moving, they're not breathing. So this goes to the 
trigger warning, renewal is principle. You don't need to know anything outside of you go put the back of a spoon in a running faucet of water. That spoon wants to stay in that stream of water. Uh, you have a ping pong ball. You can edit one of those in for me. Um, you got that? Thank you. It'll stay in that stream. And that is because faster liquid, faster particles moving around a still object. So if you're thinking of water being the moving thing and the fly being still, um, as as it, so sorry, the the gas, the liquid, the particles that are moving at a faster speed have a lower instantaneous pressure on on whatever it is on that object that it's against so what does that mean um you want to, objects want to find lower pressure they like lower pressure and so you, you take that fly moving through the water either the fly is moving or the water is moving around it as that water is moving over these individual pieces of bucktail, you're getting that effect. So if you get that effect and all of it, let's just say all of it is tied in like that, just, just giant bucktail going over everything and it's super, super dense, clearly none of this shit's going to move because water is not allowed to actually go through and lift them up too. So sparse is is not only for castability and it looks good looks good in the vice but sparse with with intention and um and a good amount of length and you know a, a good deal of overlapping so you're having fibers from you know your next tie-in point getting very reasonably over the next or the previous time point with some that are a lot shorter. And so that allows the some that are shorter allow that allows that water to then flow into the the midpoints. Let's just talk about these fibers right here. I wasn't planning on doing this. So the water flow ends here, right? And then it'll it'll hit these points. And, and pick them up. And water is going to be coming through all of this as well. So the more water you have traveling through, the more it'll lift up. If you follow that, let me know how. Because I'm not sure I did. That's just, it, it's something that I actually started thinking about with tying the craft for changers. I, I had a guy, so this one I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to rip through this thing. And yeah, um, this guy was asking about some of the crafty changers that the sort of, this tie is meant to sort of keep all that tidy. Little, little technique I learned from looking at saltwater stuff. I think it's Joey Sia Sayalata. Sia. Not going to work here anymore. But this guy asked me about tying those crafty changers, the sort of sloppy looking ones. And, and I started doing that with. A lot of it's trial and error, but some of it's just sort of realizing what works and what doesn't. And, and one of the things that I started to realize what worked is this, this overlapping. So not having these really defined lengths, but 
having some floppy excess, you know, going over from one tie to the next. And I found that out. I'm looking for some feathers. What do we want to do? We could do, we might do some white. Yeah, we're going to do some white slopping. Check that. Dude, I just, I, th this is clean, and yet. Just, oh, here we go. Here we go. Tan, tanny taupe. Died with the intention of... Now, now I got my eyes on the feathers behind me. Some of those super long sloppy ones. I'm not going to, though. Get him in. So I tied a craft fur changer as fast as I could. I tied a craft fur changer as fast as I could. And that craft fur changer, uh, I on a, in a very normal, or I don't know why I'm using GSP 140, but, or sorry, 140 in there. In a very typical fashion, you know, the, the changer took a couple surgeries, you know, I, I'll change the heads, the kill's not right, it's too whatever, the middle section's not swimming, sometimes the back's a little wimpy. And so a couple surgeries later, I mean, it, it is, it's caught giant fish. It keeps, it keeps ticking. It's a single hook, um, three shanks in the back, single hook, two shanks up front. And I tied it intentionally. I was like, all right, I want to see, cause they just, they even fast, you know, we're talking probably approaching 45 minutes on the initial tie. And then, you know, probably 30 minutes to an hour of, let's say, three or four iterations of changing stuff within it. Um, but that's pretty normal. I mean, this thing is just an animal. It swims great. It has a great profile. And it's just not... It's really easy to cast. So I was thinking about describing bucktail and, you know, how to tie in the sort of layering points because it's even hard to see when you, when you're looking at a fly, there's just so many pieces of stuff everywhere. And I was about to say that, you know, tie it in like Hanks of craft fur because they all have the different tip points. Point being, be mindful of want kind of do, but I'm not going to. Be mindful of your tie-in lengths and and endpoints and and all that stuff. Um, and I can't express enough how much you should focus on continuing to go sparse. There's some hesitation in that one. I don't really know why. There's other stuff at play, right? Especially when you're tying, when it's not a single hook, when you're not tying, you know, beasts or 
Fishing for Mosky. So I'm stepping up in length from tie in point. Just because those back two, quote unquote, I kind of treat as, I'll say one. And then I'll put a verse tie in front of this. Joey, see you later. I dig the the prop the prop action there a little bit. I also have. The greatest bucktail on earth. Only available at elliswardflies.com. No, that isn't true. Well, some of it is. Bucktail, dead deer, can be sourced by most people in North America. Uh, I did not know. I never, I didn't hunt. I'd never seen a dead deer. Well, I mean, you know, one that was, I was going to say one that was killed by a human up close, but yeah. I'd never, I think that's right. I'd never put my hands on a, a, a piece of dead deer. until uh, four years ago when I took over Flyzotics and I mean a lot of it was just I'm you know starting to start my new life down here and you know a couple things a couple things went down and um, I was in a position of needing money and, and not having any any saved a little a little faster than I thought would be the case. So what I I do genuinely believe that my bucktail is some of, if not the best, bucktail available, and it's it's because i i don't operate with profit in mind um as as crazy as some of the prices i mean last year at the end of the year i started selling some for like 30 35 40 i just didn't get all that many and i was running low on trips and i was broke as shit um hoping to not repeat any of that this year but it takes time. You have to wash it. You have to dry it. You have to dry it well. You have to wash it again. There's borax everywhere. There's it's just there's grease and blood and piss. There's they come. I mean, you, it's a it's a tail of a deer that was just shot and ran for its life as it was dying through the woods. It's not clean, and um, you know some of them. I think we're more regular than others. Some of them were a little backed up. And so I really just, it, it's, it's the, what do I want to tie with? I want to tie with something that, I don't want it smelling like a wet dog. I don't want it bleached. I don't want it cooked. Now, doing all that stuff, especially for the larger, I promise I'm not on a soapbox, for the larger places like Hairline or Wapsie or whatever, they, you have to, you have to bleach it. I'm not processing, you know, partridge and heacock, pheasant, other birds starting with P. Dying sin. I mean, I'm I'm doing it. It's just such a such a smaller scale here. 
and it really is all the hides. I mean, you can't let those things. They'll get gnarly. Uh, I mean, bad. And it happens quickly. So, I would say, generally speaking, for anyone complaining about the, you know, shitty tails out there, it's almost, you have to do some of that stuff for just for the, just to get the tails out. There's no way they'd be able to pay humans a, a, anywhere near a, a livable wage if, I mean, you just, you have to be fully dedicated just to bucktail for hours a day while you're processing. I'm going to save some, some of those long ones will hang out for the middle time. So this bucktail is the greatest ever. Now, I, I kind of want to do one that a lot of my musky flies, I think I just, you know, the, the habitual stuff and what you thought two years ago. And then sometimes that's just, you develop habits based around what you thought was a good idea. Or sometimes what you see is, something that is effective and I think I got to widen that out. I don't know. And so what you end up doing is not really a bad thing, but sort of a self fulfilling prophecy of I know this is what works, and therefore this is sort of how I develop my tie-in style. And and then in that process, you keep doing more of the same thing. And so, shockingly, um, because it's fishing, some more of those same things end up working. So I do like to every once in a while just try to hit the reset bus button as much as I can. And I'll do, I talk about this with trout fishing that, you know, on some of my trips, it's like, be like, what side do you want? I don't know. What side would you fish? I was like, man, I normally go right, but we're going left today. And it's like, why are you guinea pigging me? It's, it's because just because I always fish the right and I pull more fish out of there. You know, this section, this time of year, these flows, whatever. It doesn't mean that they're not over on the left. <clears throat> it just means that uh, UV shimmer boo. I was being emphatic, but really just not be able to remember. This stuff, man. It is like. The, the UV polar chenille, except super long, and just the UV part. And then Krennic flash is like the metallic color within the UV polar chenille. And so you tie in <clears throat> those two things together. All right, so the point of all that, that stuff was that I, I would tie a lot of my musky flies with some, you know, more rigid bucktail. And I, I, would, I would go light in the back. I would want a, a super wiggly back and a, a more sparse, you know, kill generating to something that's going to push water and not necessarily for movement of the back, but um, for, for it starting to go sideways. Strip, 
and you stop it and that head just cuts and the back keeps coming in. So I want like a, a, a higher metal to fur ratio on the back in order to achieve that. And not that that's a bad idea, but I think there are, there's a lot to be said for something that's different. And so much of this fishing, at least, we'll say where I am now, is some is slower retrieves. That's just regular UV. <clears throat> I'm not really making a, a dam with the with the UV. That little mashup there was to ensure that I'm not tamping it down. Because if you're holding it down, you hit it with that UV, it's gonna be less inclined to get flowy. I am gonna cut some of this off. Maybe. No, I'm not. I might on the water. Rear section. Should I tie in this? I'm not going to right now. Well, we're going to save that one. I'm going to do... A shank. I think you can probably still hear me. There's a technology. I've been continuing to clean up this area and continuing to lose all of my stuff. I don't know if this is, I don't know what type of shank this is. I think it's a 55 millimeter fish spine, which is different than the, different than the game changer shanks. I still haven't screwed with the next generation one. I got, I got so many shanks years ago and the thing with changers is that one i don't time for commercial orders i had this kid at a, a tying show all right we'll finish that one two i really don't lose them i don't have there are a few places outside the 10s and 15s i burned through those but all the i got hundreds of the 40s and 55s And I don't have people fishing them for trout, the, the trout changers, smally stuff. Crafty stuff. I don't have people fishing them in super fast water, so we can get them if we get hung up. Fishing 20, 25 pound, so we're not losing any. So yeah, I don't sell them. I mean, I have historically, but... So this guy at the East Tennessee Fishing Show last year, two years ago, 
he worked for another shop. He's a super cool dude. He's got a buff on. I think it's January or February. And it was like mid January. Cloudy outside. I've seen him all. He's just he's there all day. He's got a hat and a buff on. So whatever, you give everyone benefit of the doubt. Then you give them second chances. And every time he came over, it's just like, oh my God. It, it's, it's such a bizarre thing because he's clearly coming over because he, you know, he wants to talk with me. He's into my tying. Um, I would I would say there was some tying or guide crush happening. But at the same time, he was kind of being a dick because he wanted me to know that he was, you know, whatever. The man. Um, it's just, man, it's just interesting how that the, the way the human mind works. I don't know. He, he's a little younger, I think, but. It's just a bizarre experience. So he asked me for, you know, day two or three, he asked me for one of these changers that is just, just a great, great fly. And how much would you, would you sell that for? And I was like, mm, I don't know, man, like 40, maybe if I were to sell it. I'm not, I'm not really sure though. He's like, Woof. for 40, I would just tie it myself. And he he had he had already been I feel like he was already on my bad side. Um, I'm taking this off the vice and I'm spinning this up in my hands because I want I want that tie in right close to the point back there, but it's really hard to actually tie. So I looked at him and I said, you will never be able to tie a fly this good. You don't have it in you. That's probably about the length of time that there was silence between uh, when I said anything next, which, I, you know, I think it was like, have, you know, have a, have a good one. Um, he was sort of fumbling through words. It's just one of those times where, you know, in, in certain respects, it's me just losing my cool and really, you know, in real time, thinking to myself, without knowing this kid personally, I mean, the he was just so rude for two days. Also, just a, just a guy you want to hit in the mouth. And, yeah, I was like, how can I really let him know where I'm at with this one. And I felt like that did a decent job of being extremely insulting, but not like outwardly aggressive. Like, say something again, you dumb fuck. That probably would have been, you know, I would have looked back at that with feelings of, I shouldn't have said that. But going with like an insulting, and honestly, even the fact that I feel bad about it, it's kind of, if you just look at it for what it is, which is fly tying, like I, I'm, I'm being like, you're never going to be as good at me as tying dead animals to a hook. Kick rocks, motherfucker. 
cool dude. Cool dude to me. It's just, it's funny how that's my flex. But yeah, 40 bucks for, you know, weighted, rattling. God, this changer's good. I actually, I've never caught a fish on it. And it's because I just, it's in my box all the time. I'll fish it for like five minutes. And then uh, I don't know why. I just put it away. I think part of me doesn't want to lose it. We're going to start layering in some, some of this UV. So a couple kind of short ones there along with the, the soapbox of there's not even really a lesson to be learned there outside of the fact that a uh, buddy of mine from back in D.C. Alex some people we've discussed discussed this uh, multiple times. Some people are stupid all the time. And it's not always, you know, intelligence or doing stupid stuff. Some people just don't have that, like, ability to recognize that what they're saying might not be the best thing to say for so many different reasons eq whatever you want to call it it's this it's intelligence and some people don't have it and if you're saying well how about you fucking running your mouth i'm talking to a the middle hole not another human I wonder if on one of these I'm going to be like all effusive and God. Oh, I can't talk about some musky eats. I don't know. that Those stories seem boring. I'm actually being serious. Plus, I mean, none of them happen anyway, so. Where are you shorties? Not really shorties. These are probably like three and a half, four inches. Dude, for bucktail changers, I, I might have a separate category. Because there are, I mean, I'll save, I save all different types of lengths and I just put them in my daughter's, those play mats that stick together like puzzle pieces, just chop them apart and cut little slots in them. Oh, here we go. So these really nicely tapered ones that are on like the three and a half. Really don't need to be showing you. Uh, here we, yep, yep. That was the same one. I was like, oh, here's here's another one. Just put it down. But yeah, for those bucktail changers, man, if you're starting, if you if you want to tie them with, you know, j just changing things up, change your wobble up a little bit, not going super flowy and doing more of a tight wobble in the back, some shorter shanks, all that. Um, it's, it's helpful to have short fibers and to get the taper of bucktail. I don't know where I heard this. I'm guessing it was Gunner, but quoting Bob Pop. Bob Pop. Bob Popovich.
saying that you cut off the bottom inch of a four inch piece of bucktail. And that is not a three inch piece of bucktail. That's the top three inches of a four inch piece of bucktail. Not entirely true with all bucktail, but So after this one, we'll do some long fibers to get get back and over everything, get that sort of that flowiness. I'm actually going to tie in some more. Couple more shorties up front there, up top there. Out back there. Just a couple more shorties in the come out. Yeah, I wonder, I'm sitting here just in my head. Oh, here's some cool news. I found that one of the cameras, the, the one of the better deal, the DSLRs that I have that I left out in my boat three years ago during a huge heavens opening rainstorm works. I was actually looking for a spare battery and I was like, you know, fuck it. Let's see if this thing's going. Show now. Uh, and of course, the one that works takes a different battery. So now I just have two cameras, one battery a piece, and I'm doing nothing has changed. I did not change anything, but it's a cool, I like that discovery. So GSP 100 sucks at making thread dams, and that's okay. You just make a lot of wraps. If I'm doing, if I'm production tying, if I'm tying beasts in hand, I'll definitely be switching to 200. And it's, it is not about 200 being, you know, the strength I need. It does help when I'm going really fast and just want to mash down on stuff and not worry about breaking. But it's really the reason I switched to that or to 140 is because it's thicker and I can make thread dams with it. So it's, it's sort of loose up close. And then as I get farther away, I start tightening up and then I'll cinch down, wrap back up, sort of, sort of loose, get in the middle again, cinch down. And that just jams everything back. Super glue. Those are all loose. Pinch down again. So long ones. When you're tying on a shank, 
Might not be a terrible idea to throw some lead wraps around there. I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, I'm not going to. We're going to do some, just a couple. Oh, also, tinfoil. Just get some heavy duty tinfoil. So, this is likely from production tying. And it's a stack of about four and a half, some are five inch fibers. And I wanted to be tying with a light olive slash darker sick cat. And I don't want to be using the four and a half to five inches. So I'm I'm ripping through a tail and just kind of sorting the bucktail by length. And a lot of that's just taking, you know, cutting off a chunk, taking it in your hand, pulling out the long fibers, setting those aside, rinse, repeat. But what it does is after a lot of it, you have a little you got your stash. I'd really, really like to know how to create some sort of warning system for the DSLR so that I'm not, my ears aren't accosted. I, I I don't need this thing to be, you know, why am I not reverse tying? I want to start getting some fish shape. That that's that was a pretty hefty vertical tie there. I want it moving through the air and the water easily. Easily. I need to take a vacation after this one. Tan. Flop. I'm going to look for the ones that are kind of shitty. The, the, the slopping feathers near the front, if things are going to go, these will be the first things to go. And I do like to layer over some of this stuff with flash or even with a different color bucktail if I really want an effect, which is certainly more aesthetic than anything. When you start layering on a good deal of schlopping, especially in the back, you get you get a nice turnover. If that tail's really heavy. About yay long. And then kind of just cutting those in thirds.
There's something about tan and white that just does it for me. I'm going to tie this in on the bottom. Some of that belly flash. I'm really subscribing. The more and more I fish, I subscribe more and more to the idea that I think it takes a certain degree of fishiness and maybe experience, but I'm going to take comfort and energy with an angler in terms of fly choice. Like if someone's real gassed up about a fly, I'm taking that. You know, this one doesn't have belly flash. This one's wobbly. This one has a tight wiggle. I want that comfort. I want more casts. That's what it is. And then and stripping and killing and watching that thing move and watching a fish follow it. That's that shockingly, that's what's gonna get it done. So I'm gonna reverse this tie that's a little closer to me. And I'm sort of handicapping this one because it's gonna spin around. That'll sort of go on the bottom. This one. I'm sort of shoving with the thread over that side. This over there, that right there. And Bob is your uncle. I don't know if I said this in the take earlier that I'm not using, but. Or in the, the other video I did. I think the intent of these videos is, is much more for um, me venting about that turd a couple years ago. No, it's, it's, it's less about the instructional step-by-step. -step. I think that there's a lot of people... There's a number of people, not a lot of people. There's a couple people that do the instructional videos and do them very well. And I've tried them. I, I think that in person might be my more my speed. And doing the instructional videos and doing it in a way that's meaningful, the way you know Gunner and um, Kelly and Josh have a you know they have different styles there, but. Um, Paul Monahan, doing that consistently and in a way that's meaningful is, is just not easy. And to to have your own style in it and and all that to make it something that you know you want to hang out with those guys. Those are they're cool. So we're gonna do one more tie of. White bucktail. Well, yeah, in order to do that effectively, I think I, I tried sort of, and I, you know, I'll do some more step by steps for some of the flies like the swim bug. And but a lot of what I gained through my tying career. from some of those guys is just inspiration to buy something, you know, maybe, maybe it's a tough day, tough day at the office, tough day with the girlfriend, um, boyfriend, principal, all three. I don't know what you're into, but sometimes that just saps, at least for me, you know, personal relationships, professional relationships, that stuff ends up getting into, it, it finds its way into when you're trying to unwind, whatever you want to call it. I, tying is, can be so intense for me that it's hard to call it unwinding, but it it is for me. When that other shit is going bad or tough, 
it can just be hard to to be all there organically. And I'm repeating a lot of this from a couple of videos, but I don't know how many people are watching every single one. So when I would tune into those guys and, you know, they, they'd have a new video out or whatever, it just gave me this extra little, you know, I'm watching someone tie with Bucktail. I'm like, oh. And I really, I, I stopped tying, we'll say, following recipes pretty early. I, I started getting, let's say, creative. But I would still have the videos on the whole time because I wanted to, you know, some of it's picking up little bits, like... Cutting up foam so you don't have to waste your and so yeah, if I can if someone gets all amped up to I'm tying a little more in there. I thought that was gonna be a little puffier, a little easier to shove around the hook. I was wrong. We're going different, different tail. That tail is just too, too good. I like having some of those longer fibers for that, that flow thing, right? Some of those are plus the tie-in right there. Bong. But... Yeah, these are this is going to going to be thick. Yeah, so all I'm saying is if this can get to, okay? One person that's going to use this little tidbit and saying, "Hey, um I fucking hate tying on shanks." For the for the leading part of the fly for that exact reason so take the shank out and um you know instead of instead of bitching about it just realize that you can tie the whole thing in your hands I do think that I do think that I do think that the fact that this vice, these jaws have gone through, I don't envy its life, I'll tell you that much. Probably has something to do with it. And then we're just gonna... It's with my left hand, no looker. Yep. I am happy with both portions and proportions. That's going to be my new rap song coming out on that'll be the holiday album. 
Christmas album. I'm, I'm not not terribly religious, spiritual, not religious. I actually, gosh, girlfriend asked me. We talk about a lot of stuff. And we get very in-depth about a lot of stuff. <laughs> After this one, she was like, I don't know why. We've been together for a while now. She's like, I don't know why I didn't ask that before. I mean, I think you can tell if someone's like Bible thumping, what have you. But yeah, Christmas album or, or um, non-denominational. I, I love the smell of Christmas trees, though. I really do. I'll be religious for that. Bonus if I get into heaven, if there is a heaven. All right, we're getting weird. We're getting very weird. And that is a sin. This, this is not a sin, though. I'll tell you what. The camera's off now so I can talk about this. I'm going to light that thing on fire. Hmm. Card full. Anyways, go, go musky fish. It's a good opportunity to work on casting and buy new shit which is always fun. Some cool rods out there. Blaine's BC, uh, the big fly in the 10 weight. I mean, this this is, we're smooth sailing, man. It's one, one hook, shank. The Buford head, bulkhead, hollows, whatever you want to say. You get a little air resistance. It, it doesn't soak up a whole lot of water. So with that heavy line, you actually kind of get loops forming. You can sneak it under stuff. It's fun. If you haven't done it, I, I would I highly recommend you doing it. And that wasn't even recording. It's just it hurt me. Uh, if you're in the the south or southeast, give me a shout. A guide in sort of central east Tennessee down to uh, western North Carolina. We've got a couple couple different watersheds with some good muskies in them. And if you're more north of that, which is just about an hour, well, I guess two hours, so the Virginia, you know, Pennsylvania, uh, hit up my boy Matt Riley on the New River and... See if you can get a, get a trip with him. If you're first time or just a musky angler, um, I've I've been friends with him for a couple of years now, and I know how hard he fishes. And the kid's just he's he's out of his mind, and he knows that river so fucking well. It's it's one of the reasons we get along well because you. I fished with him last year for, I don't know, a couple hours. And we moved a, a silly number of fish and had a number in the boat. And he's, you know, he had like a 30, he a, a smaller fish on, it's a muskie, right? Um, on fly. And he's shaking it off at the boat because he's like sick of catching that. <laughs> like, dude. You're out of your bird. 
I could just uh Oh, I could probably talk for a little more. This is a pretty new shirt that I bleached. Um, I'm fucking with you. I fought.